All right. Can everybody hear me? All good, I hope. Great. Thank you so much for all coming to this this last, I think, maybe one of the last sessions, if not the last, of this uh, conference. And it's a, it's a real honour to be here. My name is is Dr. Chris Mooney Singh, or Singh Albatross, Singh for short, here in Second Life. And uh, I'm Chris Mooney Singh in Kitely. So thanks again to the organisers of this virtual World Best Practices in Education Conference and to all of you for attending today. Um, I'm really honoured to be here. First of all, a bit about me. I've been a writer, performing artist and educator for most of my working life. Uh, Australian born, I, I'm settled in Singapore, where I run an arts company. And it specialises in spoken word performance, poetry slam, theatre and also works in the enrichment education field. So recently we started filmmaking um, We've added that to our activities. I also teach MA level creative writing at Singapore's leading arts institution, LaSalle College of the Arts. Unfortunately, today, my colleague, Dr. Kelly West from Monash University's Virtually Enhanced Learning Project, apologizes for not being here. She teaches Chinese language courses uh, in Second Life at Chinese Island. Uh, it's a world she created for her formal courses in education and uh, we've worked on several projects together that have an educational and cultural focus in Second Life as well as in Kitely. Today I want to talk about filmmaking, machinimatography, storytelling and writing. I'm going to punctuate the presentation with a few video moments and you'll see these appear in the chat uh, in, as, a, as we go along uh, so you can take a moment to view them on YouTube and uh, you'll also get a break from me at the same time. So first off, let me set the context of our collaboration during the past five years. Kaylee and I have been particularly keen to continue this ongoing story of East-West dialogue that stands behind much of world history. This is particularly relevant again, unfortunately, given the horrible and anti-Asian hate crimes and recent spate of murders in Georgia in the US. For people like myself, Australian born and a Sikh by choice, I feel the need to share our Asia Pacific perspective and remind that the Asian tiger economies are advancing technologically, culturally and politically in this transnational world we inhabit. For that reason, we've created the Virtual Silk Road Project in 2017 to share what we call the Silk Road of Ideas by first creating in Second Life a virtual representation of a caravanserai stopover located on the ancient land route from India, China, Central Asia, the Middle East, linking to, uh, to Europe as a commercial conduit. Such places in history were not just trading in goods, but also trading in ideas, languages, cultures, education, and philosophies. At night, the merchants and travelers would gather to hear stories, poetry, song, as well as see theater and dance of all kinds. And the Caravanserai was the ultimate cultural oasis, and it is easy to draw the same analogy for we digital travelers in virtual worlds, especially those like this conference. To read more about this, you might like to check out this link later, where uh, it's a magazine that we co-edited. It's a special edition of the Southeast Asian Review of English, known as Sare, that showcased the results of the 2018 Lit Up Asia Festival, which I'm the creative director in Singapore. So these Second Life Silk Road events um, showcase theatre, poetry, dance, music, filmmaking and animation. So this is your first time to take a dive onto YouTube. Check out this link to see uh, a little bit about one of the previous events. So just take up, it's about a minute long. I'm just going to sit here quietly and watch it with you guys.
So hopefully you're all back. Good, glad that you liked it, uh, Bethany. Appreciate that. Yeah, we had fun at these events. Uh, they were they were really opportunities to do some cross cultural, uh, multi type programs. Often we see different things, uh, you know, s s single art form events in Singapore in in Second Life. Uh, this was an attempt to try to do something different, but uh, uh, the uh, the thing that, uh, that that really kind of made it interesting for me was that we streamed these live events from Singapore into Second Life and vice versa, and we kind of featured on the program, you know, these into Singaporean prominent Singaporean arts festivals, staging these you know cross-platform events, and so doing so is important for reason. You know, one of the important reasons for us is that. First, we love working in the arts and creating visual content for self-expression and education. And secondly, virtually inspired art is, I believe, a great way to reach audiences beyond Second Life and, and Sim. These have been two of our guiding motivating forces and principles. So the second of our virtual Silk Road projects, uh, and I'm, I'm giving you background before we come to the main event, which is talking about the film that I've recently created. Uh, the second one really was a collaboration between Monash University and the Writers' Centre Singapore again, and it was called, and it is still there, it still can be, you can go there and visit it, it's called Malayan Island, it's in Second Life. The Malayan is the mythical lionfish of Singapore, its national emblem actually. And it's a digital multi art gallery space that we've created housing four exhibitions to share art practices and little history of the Lion City. So in this next machinima, the Singaporean elder statesman of poetry, Edwin Tambu, performs Ulysses by the Malayan, which is probably Singapore's most iconic poem. It really addresses the idea of nation building it was written about 1980. So we used our virtual world as a film set to unpack the text and explore the character of Ulysses through our literature. So please take a moment, have a look.
hopefully uh, you're completing it now. Just let me know when you're done. Great. So let's proceed. Well, of course, we're not the first to use virtual worlds for literature and language education. This whole conference is about that in so many ways. What I would say, though, is that our target audience is, uh, is always those non-users of virtual worlds. I guess we all try to do our little bit of virtual you know, world evangelism. Um, as educators, I'm sure that you all have similar goals across your various disciplines, or you may be artists practicing. And whatever it is that we, you know, that you do, uh, it's uh, it's uh, you know, virtual worlds have so much use, so many uses, which I want to kind of talk about. So, as a storyteller and a kind of new filmmaker, I'm pretty new at this machinima game, to be very frank. I've always thought that Second Life and OpenSim form a vast movie studio lot, that's how I see them, with an uncountable number of stages or sets. The real world studios are much closer to the idea of virtuality than most of us realize because they trade in visual media and in these days, they, uh, there's an increasing reliance on virtual filmmaking tools, which I'm going to talk about. Why do they do it? Simply the most practical reason is money. Digital sets are much cheaper to build than physical ones. In Hollywood, green screen production work has become the norm. You can think of Avatar, Alice in Wonderland, The Avengers, Game of Thrones, and now with this, uh, The Mandalorian, the newest iteration of Star Wars, uh, the, the use of the new LED wall. Uh, a very much more flexible and upgraded version of the old green screen. Uh, it's an even more immersive way to create film illusion on screen. Even if we're not working in the fantasy or sci-fi genres, realistic storytelling often deploys virtual tech to digitally portray historical scenes or public places, as in this scene on the screen from the HBO series Boardwalk Empire. As many of you have already have known for a long time, the latest film technology deploys gaming platforms like Unreal Engine or Unity. These days they link cameras and VR movement sensors directly to 3D modeled environments and superimpose digital characters on real life uh, or real life actors upon the scene. Machinima artists, of course, have been using live game engine capture for years in Second Life and OpenSim. But like all filmmaking, the results depend on the level of expertise of the director and the machinematographer. Film scripting, mise-en-scene and shot design still apply, not to mention the important role of the actor. I'm happy to join this new band of machinimators and there's some really good ones. And I have been a supporter in the past of the Film Machinima Festival here, even giving a prize uh, in past years called the Malayan Prize. Um, and these these very skilled artists who apply film practice to virtual worlds. So up until recently, I have primarily been an educator and worker, uh, a working writer throughout my career, but like many others, have had to meet the challenges of the pandemic by embracing filmmaking to continue our educational practice. For that reason, I turned our Writers' Centre in Singapore into a green screen studio and use backdrops, screen captured, video captured from uh, virtual worlds to help contextualize literary performances such as speeches from Shakespeare. Green screen filmmaking composites two images or video streams, one in front of the other to create scenes for character acting or talking head video work. So this next video is Ariel's song from The Tempest. Have a look.
Hopefully you're all back. <laughs> well, we'll do the mermaid next time for you, uh, Sita Ram. <laughs> Is it Sita Ram? Or, or, I'm sure if I'm getting you. I'll just call you Madonna. <laughs> All right, so this brings me to our third virtual Silk Road project, which is based in Kitely, Singapore, 1825. It's a historical recreation from 200 years ago, and it depicts the Malay precinct called Kampong Glam, a heritage site. Singapore is a tiny island off the tip of the Malay Peninsula. It's only 30, mile, 30 kilometers long. And it grew to become the largest container port in the world until Shanghai snatched that mantle just a decade back. The impetus for our work really came from a commission from a Singaporean online film festival called Aliwal Track Tracks. I visualized a blended reality film looking for Mr. Glum that combines a site location shoot with scenes from a virtually created one. So let's take a moment and view it. Afterwards, I'm going to speak about the filmmaking process, our virtual learning journey uh, environment, and Singapore 1825 is a place to create other digital art. So have a look. It's about six minutes. Thanks for the drinks. Yo.
Thank you very much. Glad you liked it. <coughs> Excuse me. As I said, I'm a new filmmaker uh, being press ganged into it because of COVID, I guess. <laughs> um, so uh, it's uh, it's great to, to see that people have been reacting well to, to the work. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the film and how, you know, about making it. I realized that the real work is actually the pre-production work for, for filmmaking. So I play detective, obviously, with historical records, scholarly articles, early sketches, paintings and maps. And Kay Lee West, um, my collaborator, translated those into the environment you see in the film. For example, the Malay precinct, Sultan Mosque in the film, is not the same as the present day building executed in the Saracenic style. Original Malay mosques were made of wood with tiered thatched roofs reflecting a thousand years of Buddhist and Indian influences. So this is one of the virtual Silk Road investigations we wanted to make evident through our Singapore 1825 project. And why? Because history is, I believe, a multi-story pagoda showing more unity between world philosophies and cultures than the divided world today. And realizing that this will, I think, help prevent terrible racist events in Georgia. Snapshots of history like virtual uh, Singapore uh, can be recreated and they simulate the past and inspire story building. Archetypal world stories broaden our understanding and appreciation of each other's perspectives. So enough of the preach, <laughs> let's move on. So with the film, I realize you have to provide plot devices or visual cues to help the viewer to buy into the work. In this case, a VR headset is the most familiar trope representing virtuality today. Using it in the film was a convenient way to transform audiences, um, uh, sorry, not to transform them, but to transition audiences between actual and virtual scenes. And I'm pleased to say that we have had a, a significant amount of YouTube views to date and a lot of positive feedback from across the globe. In other words, viewers bought into it. Uh, and what we were, you know, into what they were seeing. Holding the audience's attention is crucial. That is why we made special efforts to create a simulated historical world as a film set uh, that would meet viewer expectations. I'm grateful to Modi Pali for her superb shipbuilding skills and for providing other assets like the traditional gamelan musical instruments. And because you know, this is a human story, we needed to commission original ethnic clothing and avatars with Southeast Asian skin tones. Ada Radius researched and modeled period appropriate Malay clothing for avatars and non-player characters, NPCs. This was perhaps the biggest challenge of the project to animate the human aspect of the story. So now a few words about the production. I chose to blend two kinds of cinematography to represent the past and the present day beach road at Kampong Glum as a way to layer the rich pageantry of multicultural Asian settlement here. It was the imaginative key I needed and most practical way for a modestly resourced film project because I could not afford multiple location shoots and real life period costume acting sequences. I followed an indie version of industry practice, combining real life filmmaking with digital sets. Pre-production took about three months. Once it was all set, the Singapore shoot took about half a day and the machinima shots uh, also around the same time. Further few nights of editing and we were done. But the real work is the pre-production. Now, I wanna talk about some side benefits of this particular project and how we've been able to apply the use of this film and the use of the virtual world. So um, for the rest of the presentation, I want to highlight some added value benefits that I see that virtual worlds have for art making and education. Recently, I collaborated online with the Alzheimer's Poetry Project based in Brooklyn, founded by a fellow poet and now friend, Gary Glasner. We did two sessions screencasting on Zoom, our virtual world for 
Alzheimer patients, staff, and family members who joined us for the hour-long sessions at a Wisconsin care facility. One staff member operated a mobile robot with a computer screen. It traveled between rooms to meet with individuals or groups of patients. This unusual but necessary COVID social distancing measure made it possible to hold a Zoom workshop using our Singapore 1825 world as a visual prompt to create a live group poem. Gary facilitated while I panned around the sim to focus on different facets of the build. For example, a flower here, a cloud of butterflies there, flying into the sky or sitting on the ocean floor. One by one, people each added a spontaneous poetic line of description to express what they were seeing. At the end of the session, the group performed it live. And I thank Gary for including me in his already highly innovative poetry project that aims to improve the quality of life of those living with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia, facilitating creative expression through poetry. Stage two will be bringing patients into the virtual world. Of course, this will need a good deal of mentorial support. So in addition to live workshops, what uh, is exciting to me as a writer is the ability to use virtual worlds to create visual content for other films. I have already commenced two oral tradition storytelling projects with Singaporean actors using green screen backdrops captured from Singapore 1825. First is Badang, the strong man of Singapore, and the second, the coming of the swordfish, both traditional folk tales from the Malay annals. These are in different stages of production and will serve our new blended learning educational programs in Singapore schools. In addition, I'm now able to use virtual scenes to make supplementary content for online video tutorials. One happy result of the pandemic and necessary reliance on digital education, the Ministry of Education here is showing real interest in our project. Let's see where that goes. In my experience, making short films is a powerful way to promote virtual learning education. So these days I'm also producing ebooks of these folk tales and other works. A special thanks to Haiki Philip or Gwen Gwasi here in SL and her recent uh, Evo virtual storytelling course, which Kelly and myself attended. And I've now created Kampong Glam the Poem and uh, which is a a narrative monologue for schools spoken by a fictitious Malay settler from the periods. So let me share a few panels on the screen and I'll read a part of the poem as we go. And zoom in. I'm, I'm sure you've read that already. I see a heron's shadow on the road. A pink hibiscus Go back one. A pink hibiscus in the pandan creep. The fisherman is ready to unload. The port is poised to grow. No time to sleep. Sailing ships are moored just off the coast. So many blown from far across the land. We came with Hussein Shah, our royal host. 600 of them still since childbirth. The British. The British made him Sultan of Johor. Getting my, my slides out of secrets. Apologies for that. Get back one. The British made him Sultan of Johor when Dutch gunboats grabbed our island home. We sailed, then landed here in Singapore, where seas are gentle. There's no, no need to roam. So that's a part of this little ebook. Uh, it's a picture book uh, designed for education. So the third short book, uh, which has also an educational focus, is Singapore 1825. Uh, the story. It's a. It's really a short nonfiction work showing highlights of the of the virtual world with more historical context. 
Although a standalone product, the ebook can also act as a tour guide for virtual learning journeys, and um, it contains text, voiceovers, gamelan music, video, and a link portal to the Kartley world itself. So when people enter Singapore 1825, they get an audio HUD and a route list of landmarks for a brief walking tour. And I invite you to go there, access the free workbook or the free ebook, and by going to this link that's now coming up on in the chat in the chat. So it's time to sum up. My film Looking for Mr. Glum has a subtle environmental message, as you probably noted. The film aims to remind us of what we have lost, and in this case, the original beach road with its languorous coconut palms looking out at the era of tall ships and trade, replaced by today's luxury hotels and concrete apartment blocks. So I hope that this recent iteration of our virtual Silk Road project affirms for you the power of writing, digital set design for filmmaking and story building, and shows a few ways to use virtual worlds creatively. Art making reminds us of who we are, where we come from and where we are going. So thank you for allowing me to share this personal artistic and educational journey with you all. And if you have any questions, fire away. Thank you very much and glad that you that you're enjoying the work. There are some very skilled artists, machinima artists in Second Life and in, and uh, who work also in Open Sims. Uh, I'm just a new one that's joined in. <laughs> but uh, what I realized that is is that we have to still apply the principles of art making. Uh, can't just be random when it comes to using film as a medium. But um, does anybody have any questions there? Or any experiences to share? Okay, we have a question. Seeing I am curious, the tools you use, for example, how do you record in Kitely? Well, I use the Firestorm viewer and I screen capture it. Either uh, I use Camtasia or I use um, OBS, uh, both are very good tools. So it's not really difficult, uh, that part of it. Of course, there are settings that you have to get familiar with, uh, how to kind of get the image right and get the right colors and you know, adjust the, the build so that it looks good for film. It is. It's pretty pretty helpful. It's a very good uh, program for, particularly for making educational tutorials. Uh, it's really geared for that. the 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 Kaili region is just basically one sim uh, at this present time, but uh, we're planning to expand it. In fact, the Kampong Glum Business Association, called One Kampong Glum, here in Singapore. Uh, very interested in what we've been doing, and we may get some financial support from them to recreate a much more intricate uh, kind of and larger version of of that period of Singapore history. And it would then hopefully become available as a kind of for virtual tourism and, you know, as a free access place for people around the world to find out about Singapore. Yeah, camming around uh, is is really a challenge. Uh, I use, you know, a Space Nav mouse, which kind of gives us more smooth pans. And uh, that really is important. But I think you can actually do good machinima work without even one of these devices. You just have to realize that best thing is to take still shots, have movement in the frame rather than adding movement through your through your keyboard uh, and movement. Yes, 
Um, also, you need good actors. To be very frank, the actors that I used in this film, the Avatar actors, were all N NPCs. Not probably good for uh, for the uh, not members of the uh, of the film guild or anything like that. <laughs> but uh, it became very easy to have animated actors that Kaylee West kind of put uh, into into animated form on the sim. And if you go and visit, you'll see all of the different activities going on at the marketplace, at uh, you know, at the the buildings, going up and down the road. So these animated NPCs really do add life to a sim uh, and not make it that experience that I've I've had I'm sure many others have had when you go to uh, a beautifully created sim somewhere but it's like a ghost town because we don't see people there so having NPC characters animated you know non-player characters really helps to bring a place to life to life uh, of course the 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 Actors in the in the real Singapore part of the film were real actors. They were not. Uh, they were not. They were not avatars. Although I guess there's a case to be made that we're all avatars anyway, in real life or in virtual worlds. Um, do we have a hypergrid address? Yes, you can. Actually, if you download the ebook link from above. Uh, it actually has a link directly uh, to uh, to the Kitely, uh, you know, kind of menu, and you can access our virtual world from there. Uh, uh, if you uh, and, but I can provide you a hyperlink later. Any anything else that anybody's got to share or any questions about the process or to share their experience of um, of making you know films machinimas in uh, virtual worlds um, the video editor was done professionally uh, in this case I didn't do the edit I had a professional person doing it uh, and he used Adobe Premiere Um, thank you very much uh, for that compliment about my MC voice. <laughs> um, so was the film viewable? I'm not quite sure if I understand uh, that question. Oh, you, maybe you came in late. There's the link. Oh, is there a link there? Maybe if you came in late, we could re-put the link into the into the chat. In fact, as I mentioned, the ebook, which you can get uh, going to that earlier link, uh, has the has the film embedded in that as well. So please do come along for the site visit that's coming up, uh, basically on the fourth or fifth of April. Although you can go there any time, it's all ready to go. We have set it up so that there's an audio HUD that you can wear and you know, follow the the tour and hear uh, at different locations bits and pieces about the history of the place so thank you uh, I think we have held your attention enough uh, if you need any more information just just I am me I'm here and thank you again for for being here and supporting this little effort first time indie machinima maker me. <laughs>